In less than a week, Charleston will elect a new mayor. Now, there aren't any more debates planned between the candidates running for mayor, so I sat down with the candidates and asked each of them the same questions. Tonight, listen to a portion of my conversation with businessman John Tecklenburg. People in Charleston have lost patience, they've lost property, and they've certainly lost time as a result of the flooding. What is your plan to relieve the flooding in Charleston? Well, we've got both a short-term and a long-term plan with flooding because it's not just from rain, but as we've seen recently, it's from tidal water. We've got a rise in sea level. Over the last century, it's risen 15 inches in Charleston Harbor. So we need to do a better job of everyday maintenance in addition to the big projects that the city's been performing. And then we need to think long-term about what we're going to do about tidal rise and we need a resiliency plan in order to do those incremental things over time like raising the road beds and main road is a great example we saw it flood week before last lockwood for the last couple of weeks we've seen tidal waters coming over lockwood boulevard so the next time we pave lockwood boulevard for example we need to go ahead and plan on raising it up 12 or 18 inches and speaking of infrastructure drivers can spend hours trying to get into downtown charleston trying to get on the peninsula what is your plan to ease traffic congestion and to Im improve infrastructure as as to our overall transportation needs I say there's, there's no silver bullet that's going to solve our problems. We've really got to attack it from a myriad, a menu of, of, of solutions. One of the biggest things, though, is it'd be the closest thing to a silver bullet, is completing I-526. I think that's a, a critical component. Long term, we need to improve our public transit system so that it's a viable alternative for folks getting around. You know, in about 20 years, they're predicting that our population is going to approach a million people. And we're going to try to build roads and bridges, but we've got to fundamentally change how we're getting around to have a better public transit system to make it easier for folks, particularly downtown, to safely walk and ride their bike as an option as well. I also asked Mr. Tecklenburg which of the candidates he would vote for if he were not in the race himself. You can hear his response and the entire interview on our website. Just go to countonto.com.